Greetings dear aspirants, welcome to today's current affairs session on Civil Spedia. Today we'll be discussing about defer bridge and about Unnati program of ISRO under our prelims topic and about space technology in border management, the right to education amendment bill and about the dangers of reciprocity uh, with regards to independence of collegium under our main topic. So let's move on to our first topic of the day the four bridge. So when you're studying about bridges, just try to know about the location of that particular bridge in which state is it located and on which river is it located. So this particular defer bridge is located on the Chipu river and it uh, and it is located in the lower Dibang Valley district in the state of Arunachal Pradesh. So this particular road was constructed under the project Udayak of the Border Roads Organization. So you need to know something about the Border Roads Organization and as the name suggest, suggests this organization was set up to maintain uh, and develop the infrastructure, road infrastructure in the border areas of the country. So it will uh, construct border roads, it will construct uh, road bridges and it will also construct tunnels. So this uh, particular defer bridge is one such road bridge which has been commissioned by the border roads organization under the project Udayak. Udayak is uh, one of those uh, projects that has been operationalized by this border roads organization at the eastern command of the country. So this particular border roads organization works under the ministry of defense. So this is all you need to know about uh, this defer bridge from prelims point of view and try to know about those recent bridges that has been inaugurated in the northeastern India. For example, a Bogibil bridge in the state of Assam and also a Dola Sadia bridge which was uh, commissioned in the year 2015. So let's move on to our next topic, Unnati program. So uh, this Unnati program is being uh, done by the ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization. So the full form of Unnati program is the Unispace Nano satellite assembly and training. So you need to know something about Unispace and about this nano satellite assembly and training. So this is basically a capacity development program to those foreign nationals of our uh, friendly nations uh, who will uh, learn something about the nano satellite development. So this particular program has been organized by India and it was announced in June 2018 in order to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Unispace Conference, which is nothing but the first United Nations Conference on the exploration and the peaceful uh, uses of outer space, where the UN felt the need post the launch of Sputnik satellite by the Russian government. So, uh, you need to know about the program objectives. So, India or the ISRO will conduct the theoretical classes and also hands on training to assemble, integrate, and test the low cost. Uh, modular nano satellite and a comprehensive course on nano satellite realization is also being conducted uh, by ISRO. So three such classes have been planned. So this is the first class that uh, is being conducted by ISRO. So this is all you need to know about the Unnati program of ISRO. Uh, let's move on to our main topic, space technology in border management. So uh, the Minister of Home Affairs, Mr. Rajnath Singh has approved a task force report on utilization of space technology in border management. So this particular report discusses about uh, short, medium and long term plans which has to be implemented in five years and uh, it has also identified some five areas of use. So those five areas are island development because islands are also very important uh, from India's security point of view and hence focus uh, is also on the island development and border security, communication and navigation and geographical information system and operations planning system and border infrastructure development. And uh, with regards to short, medium and long term plans which uh, will be done in close coordination with uh, the Ministry of Defense and the uh, ISTRO. So the border guardian forces, namely the Central Armed Police Force, your Border Security Force, Indo-Tibetan Police Force and Shahastra Seema Ball. So all their immediate needs would be uh, handled uh, by procuring high resolution imagery of bandwidth of communication. So this is the short term plan and mid term plan is to launch a satellite exclusively for the Ministry of Home Affairs and in long term uh, the Ministry of Home Affairs will create a, a ground segment and network infrastructure in order to share the satellite resources to the user agencies and it will also develop a central archival facility for storing the various imagery resources and disseminating the same to the user agencies. For this the border security force has been uh, selected as a designated agency to manage this central archival facility and also to develop these ground and network 
infrastructures and uh, this report has also discussed about operation planning and navigation with regards to operation planning the satellites help would be taken uh, to coordinate uh, the deployment of the central arm police forces and with regards to navigation so uh, satellite based navigation so it will provide for navigation facilities to all those operational parties working in remote areas in a rough terrain areas at the border areas and also naxal hit areas so this is all about the space technology utilization and border management that you need to know from mains point of view let's move on to our next topic the amendment to the right to education bill so uh, we have the right of children to free and compulsory an act that was passed in 2009 which provides for free and compulsory education to children between uh, ages 6 and 14 years and uh, as a part of this bill there is a no detention policy until class 8 so uh, one of uh, the perks of uh, this bill is the quality of education would be deteriorated in the long run because there was a report telling that uh, a student studying class 5th is not able to solve a math problem of class 3 and uh, second thing is the accountability there is no accountability of students and the teachers and in some of majority of the states wanted to bring amendment to this uh, no detention policy by abolishing it so this particular bill seeks to amend this right to education and abolishing the detention policy in schools so this uh, decision would be left to the states if they need to abolish the no detention policy or not and this bill also provides for regular examinations in class 5th and 8th where it was not there they proposed to implement this and suppose if a child fails then uh, it will be given training for 2 months by that particular school and a re examination would be conducted within 2 months so this is all uh, you need to know about the amendment to the right to education bill and let's move on to our next topic the danger of uh, reciprocity where the author uh in the editorial published in the hindu newspaper as discussed in large about the independence of the collegium system so this article largely discusses about the independence of the collegium system so it discusses about the norms and dangers of reciprocity so you need to know something uh, about reciprocity so it, it is mutual help for mutual benefits mutual help for mutual benefits so it is like uh, i help you in order to get a benefit from you and you would help me in order to get a benefit from me so uh, how it works so yes discussed about uh, how a judicial review favors and about the supersession in appointments and uh, yes largely emphasized on the separation of the powers between the judicial arm of the government and the executive arm of the government so the recent controversies uh, over the collegium system where its independence and its power is at stake because its decision has been reversed uh, which was uh, made before months whereby uh, two senior judges have been appointed to the supreme court justice sanjeev kana and justice dinesh maheshwari so he has discussed about judicial review versus appointments so he is telling uh, this judicial review seriously undermines the independence of the judges and uh, raises uh, doubts about the credibility of the is court if a judge decides uh, to favor the government then judicial review itself would be a question and uh, the government is not only the biggest litigator here but is also the great threat to the abuse of power so judicial review as a concept is supposed to control the government and keep in check of the government actions uh, which would be against uh, the public interest but in this case if a judge decides to favor the government then judicial review itself is a question mark if you see uh, there was a incident in 2015 with regards to justice k m joseph where he had struck down the emergency that was brought in by the modi government in the state of uttarakhand uh, as soon as that uh, the collegium uh, recommended mr k m joseph's name to the supreme court but it was struck down by the government because uh, the justice k m uh, joseph was not uh, towards the government so uh, this was one such scenario and this has been discussed by the author and second thing is the supersession in the appointments nothing but uh, not appointing based on the seniority order but by based on merit Uh, that by superseding the judges uh, who, who can be appointed to that particular post based on seniority so yes also again quoted some of the examples so he has taken an example from 1970s justice a n rai 
where uh, he was appointed as the Chief Justice of India by superseding three judges in 1973 when uh, he favoured the government in bank nationalisation case and also in the famous Kesavananda uh, Bharti case. And next one is uh, Justice uh, M. H. Beg, where he was also appointed the Chief Justice of India by superseding Justice H. R. Khanna in 1977 in the Indira Gandhi uh, election case. So, uh, also uh, with regards to National Judicial Appointments Commission. So, this was struck down by the Supreme Court by telling that it will compromise the independence of the CJI and it has given a role to government in the appointment of the judges. Nothing but the executive arm of the government involving in the appointments of the judicial arm of the government. So, there will be a clash of powers and there needs to be a proper separation of power. Hence, this particular National Judicial Appointments Commission was also struck down by the government. And uh, this author has discussed something about power and influence and about the norm of reciprocity. So, uh, the author tells that the power and the influence are the fundamental concepts in a society. And influence is sometimes considered to be an aspect of power. So, so if a person is powerful, he is more likely to be highly influential. And he has taken examples of Indira Gandhi and the present Prime Minister. Mr. Narendra Modi who are powerful figures and hence they can also be influential figures. And uh, with regards to norm of reciprocity, uh, he has taken uh, an example of the American sociologist Mr. Alvin Ward Goldner where uh, he tells that the universal norm in human societies is that individuals are obligated to reciprocate the favours received. And he has also articulated the, articulated the norm of reciprocity in the following manner. People should help those who have helped them and people should not injure those who have helped them. So, he is telling like if a person helps you, you should help them back. At least if you are not helping, please don't injure them or don't create any harm to them. So, it is also been uh, told in our uh, Tamil uh, literature in uh, Thirukural also. And uh, with uh, regards to uh, classes between the judicial and the executive arm of the government. Uh, so, with regards to reciprocity, the author has uh, given some comments. The, the first thing is uh, uh, the judge, Justice Mr. James uh, Keher, was struck down uh, the NJAC commission in his famous NJAC judgment as quoted the US judicial system. Because in uh, US judicial system, the appointments are, uh, is made by the president with the help of the Senate. So, so the Senate, US Senate, recommends this particular person to be a chief justice and is being appointed by the president. So, clearly the executives are involved here. So, the judge who is uh, being appointed by the president is more likely to favour the executive or nothing but the president or the senate decision. So, the ruling party decision would be favoured at large by that particular judge. But this is not the case in India. The makers of, of constitution have clearly uh, given separation of powers between the judiciary and independent integrated judiciary and this was also envisaged by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. And uh, the author has also quoted one more example, Mr. M. C. Chagla, who was a Chief Justice of uh, the Bombay High Court and who also happened to be in the cabinet of uh, the government of Indra Gandhi. So, he has uh, given, uh, told that, uh, the, uh, discussed about the adverse impact of supersession. He is telling that the loyalty towards the government uh, can be seen either in the judgment or even on public platforms. In those times, it was uh, very much uh, visible that the judges showed their loyalty in the way of uh, judgments or in the way of public platform, uh, platforms. So, the Keshwan and the Bharti case is one classic example where A. N. Rai was appointed the Chief Justice of India because he largely favoured the government's decisions. And uh, also, if you see Justice H. R. Karna, who was also uh, 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 behind this Keshwan and the Bharti case, he has told that uh, the judges use the highly sounding words like social justice for the court passed orders, where the effect of which was to unsettle the settled principles and dilute or undo the dicta laid down in the earlier cases. Because the Indira Gandhi government uh, came up with some amendments uh, that was uh, like uh, about to destroy the basic structure of the constitution. So, uh, this particular judge came up with the basic structure doctrine.
so this was also discussed uh, by the author so he has finally told uh, that the author has finally told that there should be a separation of powers between the judicial arm and the executive arm of the government and the collegium should operate in a powerful and in an independent manner so these uh, two are the takeaways of this particular editorial with this we are winding up our today's topic please do like comment and share the video and please subscribe to shankar ias academy channel for latest videos and updates stay focused and motivated friends thank you